Are you a lyricist looking to attract killer melody writers? Here's how to make yourself songwriter sexy. Listen up. All right, Johnny, do your thing. Welcome to the club! This is a show dedicated to helping singers, songwriters, and indie artists like you get leverage in the music industry. You know, the bad news is that not gonna do it for you. You can't be a big, like, sort of diamond in the rough where they're gonna come knock on your door and turn you into a star. The good news is you get to do it yourself and you don't need anybody's permission, but it's going to require leverage, which is why we called it the climb, C-L-I-M-B, creating leverage in the music business. See what we did there? See what we did? Did you catch mm -hmm. that? Did you get that? <laughs> That's a Baxter name by my good friend and co-host, Mr. Brent Baxter. Brent is a hit songwriter with cuts by Alan Jackson, Randy Travis, Lady A, Joe Nichols, and more. Got a couple number ones last year. And what I love about the man is he helps songwriters like you turn pro by revealing how you write like a pro, do business like a pro, and on a regular, he gets you connected with the pros so you can create relationships, create co-writes, and climb up that ladder. You can find Brent very easily at songwritingpro.com. Once again, that's songwritingpro.com. And I would like to introduce you to my co-host, Johnny Dwinnell. Johnny owns Daredevil Production. They're breaking artists digitally by identifying new fans through data. Listen, if you're an artist looking to increase your streams, blow up your video views, sell more live show tickets, get discovered by new fans, TV, and music industry pros, then Daredevil Production can help. Daredevil has worked with multi-platinum artists like Colin Ray, Tracy Lawrence, Ty Herndon, and Andy Griggs, just to name a few. You can find Johnny at DaredevilProduction.com. That's production singular, no S, and there is no S because there is no other Johnny D. Although if we could clone him, we would. <laughs> What's happening, man? I'm good. I'm good. What are we gonna, what are we gonna learn today? Well, dude. Okay, so uh, we had a question sent in to the Songwriting Pro uh, Facebook group. I had a had a, one of the song pros over there tag me in a post, ask me a question about, hey, how can you write lyrics that attract composers? Like, how can you write your lyrics in a way that like more people want to work with you? I thought that is a great question. I gave him a quick answer on the uh, there on the post. But I thought, man, that's worth a whole podcast. Like we can dig into this. So that's what we're going to do today. So if you're a lyricist or just want to write better lyrics, even if you write melody as well, listen up. This one's for you. Awesome. All right. Well, first, let's take care of a little business here. As mm -hmm. always, we're super stoked to be a part of the 36-year-old brand name, 37-year-old brand name now, oh, American Songwriter Magazine's Podcast Network, ASPN. Mm -hmm. And uh, listen, this is, I mean, we're proud to be one of the flagship shows that came over to this podcast network. If you followed us to, because you were a climber first before we we switched over there, check out some of those other shows on that platform. There's some good ones on there. And if you found us on American Songwriter, then... Well, by all means, like, come on Thank in. You. Welcome to the climb. Yeah. yeah I'm getting lots of friend requests from musicians and stuff that aren't like weird things. And I think that must be coming from that. But um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, make sure you join the climb community because, listen, this is a cool, thriving community. Lots of people joining. Mm -hmm. And this is um, – you know, singers, songwriters, indie artists, indie musicians. We're getting international co-writes that are happening that are creating success. They're getting syncs. People asking questions and, and sharing stories about how they did this and how they did that you know, promotion-wise and, and different little hacks that they got in their own music careers. And they're putting mm -hmm. that up there. And, and we couldn't be more proud of it. We, we, um, we're trying to post up different like relevant news stories for you guys and stuff yep. and be a, somewhat of a filter for you so that you know when, when, if we put it up there, you know it's – important and you should probably read it uh and, right. and get your take on it which a lot of people do so so make sure you do that and uh hey we you, you can't be spamming and jamming everywhere it's it's all killer no filler but we do that's have a right. place where where you can put your your wins right wednesday that's right so we have music wednesday. monday which is where we encourage you to share as a comment under the music monday post to share your music if you have a new single out if you have a new demo whatever it is a work tape something you want to share that is a nice spot where people can find it but it doesn't uh, take over the feed, you know, if you know what I mean. We also yeah. have uh, New Heights, which we post every Wednesday. So it's where we encourage you to post your wins for the week. Whatever kind of music-related wins, big or small, we love them all. We want to celebrate them with you. 
So it, that's uh, one of my more active posts, uh, which is awesome. I love seeing people comment on each other's wins and celebrating and high five and all that good stuff. So this one I want to share uh, at the time of this recording, pretty recent one. This is from climber Tracy Lip. It says, here's one from me. I just signed Tracy. a new- Tracy, that's right. Uh, it says, here's one for me. I just signed a new deal with Warner Chapel for seven album project today. I'm co-writing with a Finnish heavy metal band, Lordi or Lordi. They're on the German metal label AFM, and I even got an advance. That's rare these days. This stuff advance. sounds great so far. <laughs> Dude, Dude Tracy. It. I love that. That is spectacular. So I know Tracy uh, and Johnny, you know each other. He's done a consultation with you before, so you know have a little bit more low down on Tracy, but over yeah, in I mean, he's uh, legit. He, 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 he's, he's, uh, you know, he, he's worked with a lot of different labels. Um, mm-hmm. I think mainly Warner Chapel has been one, or Warner has been one of the main ones and as a producer and he's had, um, we've had talks about ways to market, uh, a young artist he was working with, uh, named Ipa out there. Mm-hmm. who's like fantastic. And, um, he's just, you know, working with her, helping her, helping write songs. I think he's, producing her too and stuff like that so um and then i know he's been associated with lordy for a while so those guys are huge in europe um and so he's having a good time with that that's cool. awesome that legit. So totally two more real stuff. quick before we go so congrats tracy keep on climbing in johnny matt yes, music uh said my question and song title both made the climb podcast shout out to johnny for a great consultation today so thank you good job johnny thank you. you didn't Johnny run them off yeah no nope. <clears throat> and last one we'll share today is uh paul it looks like a C chord says I got uh, got a cut on the uh, Goodwin Brothers upcoming Bluegrass album. I'm pretty pumped about it. They crushed it. So awesome, Paul! Congrats, congrats. on the on the Bluegrass cut. So man, people get yeah. cuts, people getting deals, people just having good consultations, people finishing songs and making connections. It's beautiful. Congratulations! I hope all of y'all keep on climbing. So if you're not a member of the climb community, come on in, request to join. We have we have a nice community. I mean, this is people are you know, posting on each other's wins, say congratulations and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's great. It's just a nice growing community. So come yeah, on. Everybody's there supporting everybody else. I love that part. Yes. And, and sometimes we get into some deep conversations, you know, and you know yeah. what, I got to give shout out to all the climbers in the climb community because um, sometimes some controversial stuff will come up in there when it, when it comes to music or whatever. Uh-huh. And, and everybody is, um, everybody is just, I mean, just what's the word I want to look for? Like, respectful, just, just de- de- cool decorum, about it. respectful. Yeah, man. It's just, it, I really, I really like that. Nobody, nobody, nobody gets stupid in there. So we got, <laughs> we got the smartest people in our, in our community. I can tell you that right now. I'm brag on them. <laughs> oh, that's good. But anyway, so hey, um, subscribe to the podcast wherever you consume your podcast. So you get every episode in orders. So you don't want to miss anything. You want to make sure that you're, that you're getting everything that you, that you want to hear and everything you want to hear. Leave a rating and review. We're trying to get to 200. We'll read it on the air. We read them all. Hopefully, it'll be a five star. But if it's a one star, we read those too. We own up. We own up to it. <laughs> and and finally, get a laugh out of it. yeah. And finally, uh, listen. Tell a friend about it. The, 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 these shows, we, we, we're so grateful for the time that you guys give us. We really, really are. We don't take that lightly. But we also know that the only reason we get that kind of attention from you is for a reason. It, it's because you're finding the content valuable and man, if you're spending the time there, then let somebody else know, because if it comes from you, it's a hundred percent true. If it comes from us, it's 50% true, right? That is right. That is right. right. So, <clears throat> so let's get down to the nitty gritty on this. All right. So uh, there's a guy in my songwriting pro community. He might be in the climb community as well. I'm in and out of so many of those groups so much. It's, you know, sometimes folks are in both. So he may be a climber as well. If not, I hope he is. I'll tell him to check this episode out. But Frank DeCenzo said, uh, can you give us lyricist some of the ways we can write lyrics that attract composers and make it easier for the collaborator collaborations to work with? So, so basically how, Hey, uh, he, Frank's a lyricist and he's like, how can I write lyrics that attract more co-writers? Right. How can I have better bait to get more bites on my hooks? Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, see, that's look at that analogy. So, um, didn't know that was going to go there when I started that hey. with the hooks thing. All right, there we go. Ba-dum-psh. Hey, so Frank and anyone else that is uh, listening to this, cause I know this is something that's come up in some of my song feedbacks that I do and private coaching and stuff, you know, just, this is relevant for, for a lot of people. I know more than just Frank. So, all right. So assuming you're, 
your goal is to write great songs, get cuts. Okay. This is kind of where I'm, I'm looking at, but a lot of this is relevant. Even if you just want to write great songs, you could give a rip about the commercial marketplace. But the first one is definitely commercial oriented. First thing is to study the lyrics in your target market. So learn how those lyrics are constructed. If you want to be a hit country songwriter, look and study on hit country song lyrics, classic country song lyrics, mm -hmm. know how they're constructed. They're going to be constructed differently than maybe a jazz lyric or bluegrass lyric or a pop lyric or a hip hop lyric. There are going to be some differences. You want to notice things like rhyme schemes. Yes, rhyme schemes matter and you need to have a rhyme scheme. If you're doing commercial music, our ears are tuned to hear rhymes. If you don't rhyme, you better have a really good reason, but it's one of those things where you need to learn exactly how to rhyme in really good ways to rhyme. So that once you learn that, then you can learn when to not rhyme and make that an effective tool, not just because you didn't know how to rhyme. So you want to check out rhyme schemes. You want to notice how long the songs are. Are the songs super wordy or are they not? Notice the use of imagery. Country music has lots of images in it. And so if that's what you want to write, you need to build what's appropriate for the market and learn how to use imagery, practice that. You want to notice the subject matter. You know, hey, country music, tailgates, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, that works in country. Maybe it works too much. And you want to pay attention to that too. But you just want to study your target market. Back when I was in college, I remember I was, had an apartment during grad school. And inside like all of my uh, cabinet doors and maybe outside some of my little kitchenette in my little one bedroom apartment, um, I'd printed off lyrics of just songs that I thought were super cool, super cool lyrics. I'd, I'd type them up, I'd print them off. And I had them like where I just see them all the time and could read bits of lyric and just study it and just have that input coming in all the time. Super important. If you want, if you want to build a championship race, NASCAR race car, you need to know how championship race cars are built, right? Mm -hmm. You think somebody comes in and goes, Oh, I've never built one before, but let's go ahead and build this sucker. No, you study and you break down what's working. Yep. You study. So not. you understand the physics, you understand how this thing is built to do a certain thing. You need to study the lyrics in your target market. And then also, I mean, it definitely helps to study stuff outside your market so you can bring something fresh maybe to the market, but you definitely want to have a good base in your target market, whatever that happens to be for you. So that's the first thing. Study, steady, steady, which should be fun because you should love your target market. If you don't love your target market, maybe you need to pick a different target market. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying, I mean, hopefully right? I don't need to say that, but you know, uh, no. <laughs> yep. So number two is you want to develop strong titles and ideas. So if you're bringing in lyrics and not bringing in melody, then your ideas and your lyrics sure need to be strong because that's why you're there. That doesn't mean that song always, title challenge, song title song challenge, song right? Title challenge. <laughs> so you don't always have to write your idea. I was writing with a uh, with an artist uh, yesterday, I guess, at the time of this, and man. I studied the artist. I, well, I've had cuts with that artist before. So I, you know, I know his wheelhouse, but I went ahead and studied up on the Does new Gord, stuff and do what? Gord uh, Bamford. Uh, Gord Bamford. Yeah. I was right with Gord yesterday. And so, yeah. um, you know, I came loaded for bear. I, I'd been over a period of a couple of weeks as I'm doing my song title challenges going, could this fit for Gord and listen to his newer stuff that, you know, uh, that I didn't know as well. And just studying him, studying his lane just to refresh and make sure he hadn't taken any hard left turns since last time I listened to something of his and, and pulled out ideas that I thought were very cool and fresh and appropriate for him and his brand. And I came in loaded for bear. What do we end up writing through our conversation? I end up saying something just, just in conversation. He goes, Oh, that sounds like a cool title. And he wanted to write <laughs> nice. that. We end up writing that. And so it was starting <clears throat> from zero, but that's okay. That's okay. But I came Listen, if I just showed up and said, I don't really have any ideas, that'd be a bad look. And he likes some other ideas. I think we're going to put a pin in it, maybe come back to one or two of those that we had tossed around. But something, you know, sometimes when something comes up in the room, there's just a, a different energy to it. And yeah. so is there something he latched onto? Like, great. But I did my homework. And so if you're in the room, it's because you know what to do with lyrics and ideas. And so if you can bring that to the party, then so by I say, you, you know, your ideas and your lyrics need to be strong. So by strong, like what does strong mean? To me, that means having fresh ideas. So whatever your title is, you have a compelling angle to take that. So yes, Johnny, song title challenge, right? That's something you need to be doing on the mm -hmm. regular to find 
the best angles for your titles. That's a superpower. It is. It will set you apart from the competition. You want to have compelling ideas. So yeah, not- can I jump in for a second? Yeah. Can, can I jump in? So yeah, man. So we are really high, 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 hyping on Patrick Adams and those boys, but um, uh, and Brad what Hacker, Brad Hacker and Chris uh, Tiscarino. I'm sorry if I'm saying there. You go. Wrong. And so you know they wrote that song, and um, and through the song title challenge, they had this sort of very mundane, very predictable title mm-hmm. that I promise you, it's almost like it's almost unfair. It's like a setup where everybody can, like, oh, I know where this is going to go, yawn, and then right. it's so different that it doesn't work. But man, and and you already got some feedback on that from like an A and R guy who was just like, okay, that was really clever. That was like, a cool I was angle. That was fresh. to hate it. Yeah, that was yeah. fresh. I hadn't heard that yet. And I love the way that kind of turned out. That was really cool. Well, if you're a lyricist and you're trying to get co-writes and and you're trying to attract melody people, man, can you imagine like if you had, you know, at least a verse and a, and a chorus of that sort of written out and you brought that into a melody person who just is going to be, you're going to be undeniable. Like, oh, yeah, I want in on that. I get strong, to put a melody yeah. to that. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? So that's, again, like, you know, um, Song title challenge. That's where that came from, right? Otherwise, yeah. you were going to write a really competitive song that was never going to get cut because that kind of meatball across the plate, they're just going to let the artist write that. Exactly. Them. They don't need us to write that. Like, it yeah. could be a well crafted, mediocre song. <laughs> like, it'd be good. Okay. Well crafted. They already brought in like a good melody and uh, a title I hadn't heard before, but still one that works in like the country world. So it's not weird, but just one I hadn't quite heard before so but yeah it would be like oh okay i've heard a bunch of these though but we yeah. had to serve up something that you hadn't heard the a r person hadn't heard a bunch of before so you get a chance to have a fighting chance and that's all you can really do is just try to give yourself a fighting chance and so yeah you want to have fresh ideas you want to have compelling ideas so you can have a fresh idea that no one's done before but it's so weird that no one really cares or it's so specific that people aren't moved by it or it's so heady that it's just intellectual and it's not really emotional. So you want to find compelling ideas, meaning it it evokes a response like, oh, it makes me want to laugh, cry, dance, or sit down and ponder life, right? Yeah. Ideas not just like, oh, that's interesting. Nobody ever stood in line for a concert for an hour. Why? Because that song, man, it's just, that was interesting. That was an interesting idea. I'm going to stand in line. You know, I can't wait to go drop 20 bucks on a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. No, it was like, we want something that moves us. So sometimes lyricists, we can get kind of, and I've definitely done this kind of get up in my head and, Oh, that's interesting. That's different, but it's ultimately, it's not really commercial compelling. It's not, it's just a thought experiment. And then, you know, go through those steps and that's fine. But it's the ultimate point is to move somebody and to compel Mm -hmm. them. Right. Um, So an idea that gets a reaction. The other thing is to, uh, that makes a strong idea is an idea that's appropriate for your target market. So it's, it makes sense for a country artist, for a pop artist, for a hip hop artist. Like, is that, is that make sense in that world, in that market, on that radio station? Does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense. Yeah. You know, there can be, you know, ideas that like some, you know, I don't know, like CCM songs, those ideas would not be appropriate in pop rock. You know, right. it's a straight up Jesus song or whatever. And I'm a sinner and I need to be saved kind of thing wouldn't maybe not be appropriate in the pop market. Like, Unless you do the reverse of what they did on South Park. <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> right. Yeah. Where Carmen, where Carmen's like, we're going to be a Christian man. Well, how, we don't know anything about how to write about the, sure. You just take all the pop songs or whatever they say, baby, you put Jesus. Exactly. I love you. Jesus. <laughs> so if you just take wherever they put Jesus and, and put baby, then it, bam, you're a pop song. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but that changes the whole meaning. So then it becomes appropriate. Uh, just like yeah. a you know uh, a panty dropper <laughs> love song is not appropriate for CCM, okay? So like that's not going to make sense. It has its, its place. <laughs> yeah, I said that. Um, uh, I'm, I'm rubbing off on you, Brent. I'm like, not appropriate yeah. for this market anymore. Anyway, um, I love how you're the black sheep in your writing trio for Southern Gospel. Exactly, I'm the I'm the edgy one. Oh, we can't say that. Yeah, yeah, like, no, that's too edgy. Oh man, if then when I want to feel not edgy, I just hang out with Johnny. So, <laughs> no, everything's okay. Yeah, I'm not that bad. Yeah, it's not that bad. You're fine. I'm still a man of God. <laughs> 
Johnny's having a moment, ladies and gentlemen. Johnny's having a moment. <laughs> all right, sorry. <laughs> That's all right. All right. So, uh, yes. So we got so far, study the lyrics in your target market. So you know what's appropriate. And then you know what's fresh, you know, so you know what's out there. So you know if this has been done a bazillion times or not. So you can develop strong ideas and titles. A fresh title is money. You bring in, oh, the house that built me. Even if we don't have any other parts of it, you're like, oh, that's interesting. Just like yeah. our last song title challenge on Friday, Heart Like a Mason Jar from uh, Will Gunnell. You're like, yeah. Ooh, huh. I make sure Where's you Where's he going to go with that? Out. Yeah. Where's he going like, to go with that? It's interesting. Yeah. So do you want to, so that's, a, that's a basis. That's where you're starting. The other thing is you want to use fresh language. So even if you have an interesting idea or title, you can kill your potential co-writer's interest. If you fill that lyric with cliches and boring overused rhymes, you want to keep it fresh. You want to say, sometimes you just want to say the same old thing that's been said a million times. You want to say it in a fresh way. That's big. Yeah. That, that can bring the most out of your less compelling titles that's like, oh, you know, like I've seen, and I use, I've used this story a bunch, but on Brad Paisley's second record, I loved his first record, bought it, loved it. Second record was coming out. I knew I was going to get it, even though I'd only knew maybe you're going to miss this. The Fishing Song was mm -hmm. the first single. And that was the only thing I knew because it was before you could go listen to everything, really. Right. And so, but I knew I was going to go to Walmart. I was going to buy a second record because I liked his first record. And so I'm, I go and I get it and I flip it over. Of course, first thing I'm doing is looking at the track list. You know, these songs I've never heard before except for the one single. And I was like, oh boy, I was a little concerned. Some of these titles were like, All You Need Is Love. I'm like, I don't think that's a Beatle cover. Uh, <laughs> you, yeah. you know, you, uh, let's see. Uh, I Wish You'd Stay. You know, you're going to miss this. Some of these titles that were like, not super compelling. I was like, I don't know, man. That's I don't know. But then I put it, you know, you, you put it in. Second and thoughts, you like you thought. You, uh. Yeah, I did. I was like, I don't know. These don't sound super compelling from the titles. But then you put it in, and he puts his Brad Paisley yeah, lyrical right. sensibility on it. And you're like, oh, okay, that's really cool. Like all you need is love was a joke about a wedding, about just you're going to get married. You want me to play? Well, just remember, all you need is love and a preacher and a license and a, you know rings and, and he starts listening to all this stuff that goes into a wedding and of course a PA system if you're wanting me to sing and all this it's just this fun barn burner fun song but just remember all you need is love and so it was sarcastic and it was funny yeah. and unexpected I was like okay that was that was super compelling that was awesome you know compelling just because it made me laugh and I didn't see that coming from this all you need is love title you're like wah, wah. oh no right. okay that's great well if you're gonna do it like that or I'm gonna miss her and you're like, I don't know. I'm going to miss her. Yeah, pff, that's what every song's about. Then you realize, oh, it's a fishing song. Wah, wah. Yeah. She came, I was fishing too much. She made it an ultimatum between, you know, if you go fishing again, I'm out of here. If you're gone today, he's like, I'm going to miss her when I get home. <laughs> and it was hilarious. And it, it put him over, right? <laughs> and so you're like, boring title, <laughs> amazing hit song that really took his career to, you know, the next level. So again not the not the best title but man the angle on it and the language is super compelling and that's what you got to bring to it. so you want to use fresh language you don't you don't want to say it as plain as you can say it most of the time you want to find a little different way to put some zing on it all right here's another thing that's super super important it all is though i guess you want to develop a strong sense of phrasing so phrasing is how the syllables are emphasized in a line right, so it's not the number of syllables we don't count syllables but we want the lines to have a certain kind of rhythm to them a little kind of a beat um so for example sing us a song you're the piano man sing us a song tonight all right so how do, what's the phrasing sing song piano all right sing us a song you're the piano man this is the way that phrase is sing right. us a song you're the piano man boom 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 right it's like kind of a three beat sing song piano sing us a song tonight so it's like a three beat sing us a song tonight we're all in the mood for a melody and you've got us feeling all right so all those so that chorus has like a three three beat kind of phrasing sing us a uh -huh. song you're the piano man sing us a song tonight and guess we're what it's, it's in, in a, a, it's a, a melody a triple you've got us feeling all right yeah, like swings, right? It's a, it's a, yeah, it's a triple beat. It's a triple meter. Yeah, yeah, and so that's one thing, and that's 
but that's very different than baby you a song you make me want to roll my window down and cruise very different yeah. phrasing right um i'd burn this whole town down if it wasn't for my mama's house my mama's house you know so <laughs> just the lyric you know it, there's a different kind of phrasing and a bounce and a and a rhythm to the words that you can have even if it doesn't have that melody yet it has a a a sense of rhythm in the words and the way that you read it. So oftentimes I'll read it out loud to my co-writers and you should read it out loud to yourself. Do I trip over these words? Where are the natural rhythms? Does it found, sound clunky? Am I having trouble reading it? Like, you know, even if you put like a metronome mm -hmm. on or a little drum machine or a little loop or something and just kind of read it over mm -hmm. the top of it and see how just the beats. Oh, that's feel. a good Even idea. Not yeah. Melodies like, can I can I read on top of this thing where it's going to sound like it wants to sound and it booms and it pops and you know that sort of thing? Well, can I read sound my lyrics like it's going to sing? Like yeah. Almost almost like you're rapping it, right? Can I kind of rap this? Yeah. Sing us a song. You're the piano man. Sing us a song tonight. Boom. You know, and so they can have different phrases. It's not, we don't have one phrase because baby you a song, you make me want to roll my windows down and cruise is different than I'd burn this whole town down, you know, pick a spot, dig a yeah. hole and put the masters in the ground. You know, it's different. So, so phrasing is so super I have, important. I, I have a question. I want to go back a little bit to words. Like when you're yeah. talking about using fresh words, uh -huh. do you have like any kind of um, like tool in your toolbox that you use when you get stuck on, uh, on a word or, or a way that you want to say something where you're like, I got to find a different way to say this. And is there some sort of like creative little process that you go through to uh, sitting and staring at it? Um, I mean, I, in the past from... I've used, you know, thesauruses, you know, synonyms, that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. find different words for different things. I haven't used one of those in forever. I don't have any problem with it though, but that might be a, a way just to find what's a different word for anxiety. Oh, worry. Duh. Okay. Duh. Yeah, I can use that. So sometimes yeah. that may ping an idea that's a different word that may be more euphonious, a word that may sing better, or a word that fits in the phrasing I've developed so far. That sort of thing. Other than that, man, we're just we're just trying different stuff. Um, and it's amazing how, like, when you if you're in the room and there's starting to be a melody, and so you're starting to get that phrasing boom, because you know I kind of know what this works and the kind of structure I'm working in. Sometimes it's that phrasing. Cause you're going dun, 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 will kind of sometimes give you the word. Cause you already have the bounce and the kind of the syllables and the rhythm of it. Mm -hmm, well, sometimes mm -hmm. will help guide you on, you know, kind of what the, the shape of that box is that you're trying to fill up. And sometimes that'll ping an idea. Um, so no, I just sitting in and just trying, it's just practice of using words and trying to find different words a lot and different ways of saying stuff, just working that muscle, working that muscle and trusting my brain to bring it to them to me yeah. when i need it you know okay brain i'm counting on you yeah you know? anytime anytime now anytime now come on <laughs> like, this is really what we are because we're trying to think of something we haven't thought of before yeah i mean that's what we do for a living what do you do i think of stuff i haven't thought of before in, in so many ways and how i'm at the mercy of that is really weird right because yeah. it doesn't hit me until it hits me and you know, even if in retrospect, it looks like so obvious, which is kind of in a way what you want. But it's not until it is. And so you just keep working that muscle. So another thing is to write a lot and try to expand your vocabulary and, and use. And sometimes, you know, words I've had publishers ping me before. Went, oh, that word's a little too weird. But other times that's somebody's favorite line in a song. Because um, One of my interns, I think, asked me about that, about words that you can say that or you can't say or whatever. And of course, they're like certain, you know, you're not going to drop an F-bomb on country radio and you got to be real careful about what you say in CCM or gospel or whatever. But other things are just weird words. Like I had a Randy Travis cut and I've talked about this before on the podcast, but we use the word spork in the song. <laughs> yeah, that's right. KFC Because it was about going to KFC after church and you put that spork back down because we got to pray. And a spork, a little plastic spoon fork. And... You know, my co-writer and I went round and round like, I don't, man, I don't know if people know what that is. I'm like, I think they do. And it's KFC. It's appropriate. And it's a funny song. And it's a weird word. I love it. And so we yeah. went around the <laughs> office and we did an informal poll of people that, you know, work there. Like, <clears> hey, so also, yeah, you know what a spork is? Yeah, a little plastic spoon, spoon for KFC. I'm like, thank you. And I ended up winning that, that debate. And we... <laughs> 
we demoed well, you it went down Spork. that road. You went down that road yeah. to make sure. Yeah. Demoed it with Spork. And when Randy cut it, he was he was worried that people wouldn't know what Spork was, and he made it Fork. So he changed it back. So I was oh. so disappointed. But he's the Hall of Famer, uh. so he's probably right. But I had people at the label tell me, they're like, oh, I can't believe you changed that. It's my favorite line in the song was Spork. <laughs> It's compelling. You yeah. might hate it. You might be. Con- you probably not. You shouldn't be confused by it. Really, everyone should know what it is. But you know, so it, it was a reactive line. So some people's favorite. I'm from line, Wisconsin, and I know what a freaking spork is. But exactly. I think probably more people in the South understand spork than the I North. Would, but I, I knew what spork was. Exactly. So, so that you was know. a that was a pussy move. Like he <laughs> he could have he could have left it in there. <laughs> I know. But it got cut by a bluegrass act, uh, the Lonesome River Band, uh, a few years later, and, and they cut it off the demo, and they said spork. So thank you, Brandon oh. Rickman nice yes so i was like okay at least at least that version got out there um so yeah don't be afraid to go for some of those because again like that they end up taking it out but other people like that was my favorite line in the song because you said sport (laughs) all right man big risk big reward we're taking a swing here we're taking a swing um so anyway back to phrasing you just you gotta practice on phrasing like read other people's lyrics like just songs that you know you kind of know the rhythm to like i was doing with piano man and um some of that other stuff like cruise read their lyrics you know you're gonna have the melody the kind of the rhythm in mind because you know the song but just practicing reading it I'm like oh, okay this oh, is that's how a really good idea out. like you know so, what you could do that you could do that and first of all there's about a million apps on your phone that will create a metronome, right? Mm-hmm. Or, a, or a little drum loop. And, you know, 4-4 four, four, or 3-4 time, like a triple meter or a 4-4 or a, or a four, four time. And and some of those songs that you're doing research on that you were talking about, mm-hmm. your market research, right? Like go and read those lyrics when you when you know, you know, what, what the, the, the kind time... Of the meter is or whatever. The, the, the meter is, yeah. And then, and, and because you're familiar with the song... Like without singing it, just read it to the rhythm of it, yeah. and then, and then, pl- and then play that. I think if you did that a lot, like if you did that for maybe five minutes a day, right? Yeah, or ten minutes a day for for a couple of weeks, all of a sudden you get like really, you just start to develop this intuitive sense of rhythm, uh, rhythm, of own, you know, yeah. that's going on. That that I bet that I know. I know. I don't bet. I know a lot of aspiring songwriters don't have because yep. they're they haven't they haven't gone down that road yet and so well, they're writing it like prose or a poem or a different kind of thing or just words and because they don't like i i don't really hear melody but i'm hearing so much more just the more i do this more maybe not melody like up and down but i side to side you know like i played drums in junior high and high school and mm-hmm. it's like, can you read music? No, I can read it side to side, but not up and down. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like because I can read like quarter notes and eighth notes and sixteenths, but I'm not doing uh-huh. like minors and majors and scales and stuff. No, I just beat things. And but that's helpful, you know. So I, I'm hearing more, not on everything, but some rhythm and some stuff to the words because I'm writing it with this, trying to where it flows. So that's important. The more you can do that, the more it's going to help your co-writer have put a melody on it. For one thing, like it, it has this in its own built in kind of rhythm if you do it well. And so when you read it to them, you read it to them with a the rhythm and they can kind of hear what you're saying and how you say it. And like, oh, OK, OK. And they can add the sort of add notes and chords to it. You're setting yeah. them up for success. You'll be easier to work with. And so you already have more of it developed. You're bringing in some rhythm already. Yeah. And also to go with that, develop strong structure. So the first line, like I've run into this, like the, somebody's first line of verse one, verse one, line one will have like a three bounce kind of meter. Sing us a song tonight, right? Boom, mm-hmm. boom, boom. Like, all right. So that's like line one, verse one. Then line one, verse two is that, baby, you a song, you make me want to roll my window down. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> these cannot Can we just have change a change time signature. So yeah, we'll have it's it. Like, <laughs> Uh, yeah, as I'm reading it, pretending you don't know the melodies, right? How am I going to put the same melody to these two lines? These yeah. don't fit together at all. That's good. Yeah. So you're like, that It shows you have some work to do. When that happens, that happens. That stuff runs across my desk on, on a pretty regular basis. We're like, all right, you got you to gotta work on your phrasing and, you know, uh, kind of a 
A simplistic way to do it is to count syllables. Again, it's not about syllables. We don't count syllables. The syllables don't have to be the same, but until you get that sense of rhythm, it's kind of a crutch just to count mm -hmm. syllables to go, oh, wow, this has five syllables. And the, so the, you know, cause your verses need to have the same melody for the, for in general, right? So your melody line on verse one is going to be the same as your melody line on uh, verse two. So therefore, if you can keep those line, those syllable counts the same in parallel lines, you know, verse one, line one, have the same kind of bounce and rhythm as verse two, line one. And verse two, mm -hmm. you know, line two will be different from line one, maybe, but it needs to match verse one, line two. You know, so all the way down, it, it's hard to talk about, but it's like, if you study it, yeah. you'll notice like, oh, these lines. But it's like, it's like, like three, you said, when you're counting the syllables, rhythm, you know. Yeah, when, you, when you're talking about counting syllables, it's like, it's like when you first learn to tie your shoes, it's like Chinese math, you know what I mean? It's yeah. Chinese algebra. You're like, what? Like, I, and it's, you got to take all this concentration. You got to learn how to do mm -hmm. it. But now it's become such a, a system two kind of thing for your brain that you don't even remember tying your shoes this morning because you had five other things going on right. inside your head that you were thinking about. And you didn't even need to look to do it. You just sort of intuitively know the muscle memory knows how to do it. So I think yeah. that's the. So um, I'm not counting syllables uh, so at this point. Remember. I'm just counting like the bounce, the rhythm. They may have, you know, there may be a pickup, so it's a little different, you know, syllable count of this line than that one, but the bounce of the, where the words are emphasized falls in the same place. So like you can sing the same melody over these two lines, even if the syllables are a little bit right. different, but if you need a crutch getting going, syllable count's a, a good way to start looking at that, to, to get it, you know, fairly in shape. And of course that only counts syllables. It doesn't count where the emphasis is on the syllables, which is more right. the bounce, the but it can start the emphasis on the, we want to put the emphasis on the right syllable, the right? Wrong syllable. So <laughs> you want to, you want to do that. So that, so structure too, uh, has to do with rhyme scheme. So you want to keep your rhyme scheme schemes consistent from one verse to the next. So the rhyme scheme that you have in the verse may not be the rhyme scheme you have in the course. That's fine. Oftentimes you do want to change those up and maybe a different one for the bridge. They can be the same. They might be different, but the rhyme scheme for verse one needs to be the same as the rhyme scheme for verse two. And you probably don't need more than two verses, <laughs> but if you have a third one, same thing for that. Yeah. <clears throat> as you get more advanced, then you can, you can tweak and you can play a little bit, but you just need at the beginning, just go, these are the same, <laughs> you know, yeah. this is the same rhyme scheme. And also if you have internal rhymes that can help your, your lyric to flow and be more interesting because uh, you're just giving that ear candy with the internal rhymes, but focus on the end of lines right now. And then you can start putting in internal rhymes as, as extra Easter eggs and candy um, for that. So all that stuff you get from studying lyrics in your target market. So if you, if you print off some lyrics in your target market that you love, man, I used to get like different color highlighters and highlight like the dip where the different rhymes fell. Mm. Uh, and I would, you know, maybe get another one and you underline or you circle the images and then pretty soon you're seeing like, oh man, they got images all throughout this thing and here are the rhyme schemes and it's, oh, it's the same in verse one and verse two. Well, look at that, you know, and you can start figuring out not how- an, Not another bad it. way to, to, to do, again, going back to like doing your market research, right? Mm -hmm. and, and pulling the lyrics up from a song that's out there, print them off and do that too. Yeah. Like, you know, dissect that, like with the, with the, the highlighted markers and where the rhyme schemes are mm -hmm. circle, the imagery. So now you're like, <clears throat> and then, and then take that sheet and put that next to your last song that you wrote. Exactly. And highlight and the how same many circles stuff, are there you know? on this side and go, and what, how, how does that compare just like aesthetically with the, with the highlighted highlights mm -hmm. in the circles? Boy. That would be telling, wouldn't exactly. it? Exactly. Yeah. Especially, I mean, over time, if you get, I guess we call it st statistically significant sample size. Like you do one one hit song and then one of your songs. Well, yeah, there are going to be some differences. That doesn't mean that's, you know, yours needs to be built, all your songs need to be built like that one song. But if you do that over time, you'll you'll start seeing patterns and stuff. You know, it's over time because you're not trying to, it's not science, but there is a science to it. It's art, but there's still a science to it. It was yeah. rhyming. Well, just like, just like guitar. I mean, they're, you know, 
it's ma- it is it's, music is it's math, artistic right? use of math yeah because it's there there are intervals that are happening there that are very specific and and you can make them a little unspecific to make it to make it make work a desired you know effect. Yeah. yeah and uh and the the yeah and so you can bend and you know it's like you can be very artistic but not bring it back but it still needs to be in tune yeah like you can yeah. be artistic all you want but it needs to have it needs to be tuned there are different tunings but you need yeah. to pick one <laughs> you know, like, pick one you can't you can't have three of the strings in this tuning and three of the strings in that tuning and just, expect it. unless you're extremely good <laughs> Yeah, there are probably some people that like I've seen people play that have like two capos going on and alternate tuning. Like, okay, but you just know how to play in your standard tuning. Pick one. That G yeah, needs step, to be step one. Step, step one. one. Yeah. You need to learn that. Okay. So it's an it's an art, but it's backed by really by science. You know, we want to hear rhymes. Why? We're programmed to hear rhymes. It feels complete. And anyway, as you study, you'll get more. So the other thing is develop how words or pay attention to how words sing so study songs and you'll see that some sounds are good for like big notes like a big hold a note note some vowels yeah you want to become a student some words just sing better than others um o sounds sound great at the end of lines oh it's a note you can hold right versus like an e may sound thinner and not as oh strong, you could you know. So they're different, just different stuff that you'll start. Or if it's like, do you want to hold out the word crunch with the big ch on the end? Right. Like, right. you know, like I don't know how the world that's going to sing. So that's conversations we have. And and as you study lyrics, you'll start finding out oh these different sounds sound good on like big notes or the end of a line versus just all that kind of stuff. Like if if you sing the word happen. If that comes at the end of a line, well, that's probably an internal line that's moving on to something else, or not. You're not going to be a big note that you're going to hold up. Happen. Mm. Well, you know? hey, let's, like let, let's kind of to, of, to do it. And in general, you'll kind of get some some sense of like what's going to sing well, what's not. And again, that's setting that co-writer up for success to go. Oh yeah, that sounds good. Go ahead. Go down that road for a second. <clears throat> One of the things I learned. Remember, I told you I clawed my way to middle management in the vocal department. Mm-hmm. But it, so this is this is going to sound so ridiculous to climbers, but um, but for those of you who are lyricists, maybe specifically mm-hmm. and don't sing, um, and for some of you singers out there who are trying to claw your way to middle management, like oh, yeah. I did, <laughs> um, you you almost never sing a note on a consonant. Right. So the trick for me to learn how to sing better you want to have was a good vowel to, movement to pick the, yeah, to pick the vowels. Right. And mm-hmm. then it's, you've got to find where you're going to resonate that vowel in your mouth. Right. Mm-hmm. And so the, the, the A, the ah sounds kind of right on the roof of your mouth. Right. Mm-hmm. And the O is, is a little farther forward on your, in your mouth. And um, now mm is, is something that we sing. Right, Oom-bop. and that's my wife loved that. Which yeah, was, yeah. and and that like so so mm. microphone wise, like you learn to put that vibration, like you're going to resonate that in front of your teeth. Like you can you can resonate in, mm, behind your teeth or in front of you. When you do it in front of your teeth, the mic just comes alive with that, and it's like, mm, and it just sounds better. But you know, you can't try to sing a K, you know, k- sure. <laughs> or ch. Or, or, you know, consonants for the most part, you can't. And so when you have like, you know, when, when somebody would sing happen, they're, they're, they're not going to sing the N as much as they're going to sing the A hey. or the E, right? Ha, and right. diphthongs, that's the singer's choice, right? Yeah. On the diphthong, because A is the, is two vowel sounds, isn't it? It's A and E, A, mm-hmm. A, 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 you know, and so how you... You know, it's like, I'm going to take it or I'm going to take it, you know, and yeah. like, where are you going to put that? So when you're talking about singing, like um, if you're not if you don't know that because like, the singer, that could be like really helpful. I think maybe for lyricists to remember mm-hmm. that where, where's that the, where's the vowel at? Like, and how is that going to sing? Because it's going to be on a vowel that they're going to sing it. Right. So like. Orange. 
That can go right. in your verse, but you may not want to end your verse with, well, for one thing, it's really hard to rhyme, orange, right? But right. it's something Let's you hold in. out. <laughs> Is that going to be a worthy hold out? Is that, oh, that's our big note right there, that line, orange. You're like, how does the crap is that going to sing? It's just studying that stuff. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's yeah. you know, that's why, I don't know. So that's it's super important. The more you can learn that stuff, the more you're going to be able to bring in a lyric that a singer can, or a melody writer can go, oh, I can work with this. Like so much of it is laid out for yeah. me. You've laid out the map and the stuff is going to yeah. work. Great. So and that, they're going to want to work with you. Because you get that, because you you're that. you're intuitive you're on that. And so if you can understand them, exactly, you're you're making it easier on them. You bring in a fresh, compelling idea, title, um, and it's structured in a way that makes sense and is appropriate for the market and is built to sing. Awesome. I don't have to totally yes. tear down the second verse because it bears no resemblance to the first verse, and we got to have that conversation. Right. Oh, they, they match up. Sweet. All I do is write one verse melody. I don't have to write a completely different melody for the different verse. Right. So that's how you can build the lyric. But the other thing is, how do you find the co-writers? Because some people may be like, dude, I'm great at lyrics, but I can't find the co-writer. So I just want to share as we finish up some great places to find those co-writers. There we go. So, okay. First of all, who to find? Who do you want to find? You want to choose a co-writer with, that has compatible goals. Right. Because if you want to write, uh, you know, I want to write. I want to write pop songs to get used in Coca-Cola commercials. But mm-hmm. this person writes like I don't I like to write 1945 banjo music. OK, they may be really good at that, but it's probably not going to end up in a Coke commercial or That's in right. a workout commercial. Like I want to be in a Peloton commercial. I'm going to have my song with people are high energy. And you're like, well, I have to play the banjo pretty fast, I guess. But you want to find co-writers who have compatible goals. So that's a big thing because you're aiming at the same target. You know, they want, you want to write country hits. Well, good. They want to write country hits. Now they may be interested in what you have to bring to the party. So that's who you want to find. Yeah. Where do you find them? Go to, join the climb community. Have we mentioned that this episode? Join the climate community. <laughs> we have places yeah. where people can post music, post their work. And like on Music Monday, if you don't have a full sound recording, that's fine, man. You can post your lyrics. You can post just lyrics under there. Um, we have the Songwriting Pro Facebook group um, also does that. We have U Day Tuesday. We have Feedback Friday. The Songwriting Pro membership, I'm going to give us a plug for the membership, is a great place to find co writers because what we do. We also have we have a private Facebook group where you can share your work. We have the site where you can share your work and give in, and give feedback, so lyric only or lyric and melody. So you can connect with people there. You can private message them on the site. But another big thing we do every month is we have a co-writer cafe. And so we have one coming up actually tonight at this recording. So we do a jam session, which is first, which stands for Just Ask Me, because you know how I like the Baxter names. And so it's mm-hmm. it's like my office hours for an hour. I'll speak on a topic for like 10 minutes and then they just ask me their questions for the rest of it. We record it. It goes in the member area, but the members get to kind of hang out with each other, you know, where they're asking questions, you get mm-hmm. a sense of who people are, what they're about. And then right after that, we roll into a co-writer cafe, which is not recorded, but I break the writers up into small little breakout rooms for 10 or 12 minutes each. You know, like three or four people in a room and they just get to like introduce themselves, talk about, you know, get to know each other. Then I bring them all back in and we, we shuffle the deck. We send them back out to meet with a couple of different people. And we do that once a month uh, for an hour. And it's your chance to get FaceTime online with people from all over the world. And co-writes are coming out of that. Friendships are being formed. So that's a way to find some people to write with. And so we have lyricists in the group and we have melody writers in the group. We have all kinds of stuff. All We have got all the flavors. Um, so that's where some places you can find all them. All of them. Songwritingpro.com. So check that out. So another place, it, another thing to do is uh, to help it go well is you want to, to find those, but you got to be willing to show your work. You got to p- be willing to put your lyrics out there for people to take a look at. I think the client community yep. is a safe place to do that on like a music Monday or if you post, Hey, share your work, that sort of thing. Um, or on your own socials. And then we have social share in the client community. So you can post, you know, your links to, your Instagram, your Twitter, your Facebook, whatever you got, you know, or your website. But you got to be willing to share your work, show yeah. your work. You can't hold it so tightly. Like I got great lyrics. I can't show anything to you, but we should work together. 
no, no, we probably shouldn't because I have no <laughs> sense that you're actually any good. You know, the more tightly people hold their stuff, yeah, and just don't say anything, it just sounds unprofessional. Like they, they just don't know what's up yet. So, I mean, yeah. you got to be willing to show your work. It might be, hey, these are songs I've written the, in the past with people that so they have full melodies, so they're completed songs, or sharing in different groups and different settings. Uh, you got to be able to share your work so people may find it. Go, oh, that's really cool. You know, um, what's another thing? You know, when we post the the uh, song title challenges in the in the Facebook group in the Climb community, you know, how would you write this one? Mm-hmm. Well, pop on there. Tell us some of your thoughts on angles. You come up with some cool thoughts we didn't think of. You're going to get some other people's attention. Oh, that's a really cool idea, Brad. Whatever. You know, and that's yeah, a way to start yeah, making yeah, yeah. a connection. Uh, and the well, last thing. You're going to reach out and be like, hey, this is good. This yeah, is that cool. Was cool. Yeah, right. Also, you want to be a fun co-writer. And some just quick ways as we're finishing up here. You want to be flexible. Meaning, hey, and that's why I tell everyone when I bring in a lyric, I may bring in a verse and a chorus or a chorus lyric or something. I'm like, this is scratch. It's all subject to change, but this gives you an idea of the vibe and the vision of it. And sometimes we'll keep a lot of it. But I want to go, hey, you don't have to write a melody that fits over every this these lines as they are exactly right. I expect there will be changes, but I'm just giving you a sense of the vibe so you can catch mm-hmm. the vision that that I have for this thing. And then we can we can dig in and we can work stuff. So be flexible. That t- kind of takes pressure off them to go. Oh man, I can't change anything. All of a sudden, that's pressure. If you're like, dude, it's it's flexible. Let's play. But they love the vision of it. Then that's exciting and takes some of the pressure off. You also want to accept feedback and changes if they think, oh, I think this line here, you know, it's got too many syllables. Can we shorten it up? Or ah, I'm, I don't get this. I don't like how you said this. Or I don't understand it. Hey, you want to be gracious. You want to accept feedback potential changes, that kind of stuff. You want, you want to be playing the sandbox well with others, right? It's a collaboration. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you invite yep. them in to your house to live in your house for that song, for that idea, you got to let them vote on where to put the couch. Because if you're going to say, let's be roommates yeah. in this house, <laughs> don't be mad if they want to rearrange some of the furniture. Because you say for this song, we will yeah. own this song together. This will be our song. So yeah, you have a say on what hangs. That's a good way of putting it. <laughs> and the last thing is give mad respect to the melody. Don't be like a suck up yes person on that. But like melody is usually important. If it doesn't sing, it won't get sung. You you want your songs to sing well, so a singer will want to sing them. So as we talked about the consonant sounds or the vowel sounds, how certain words sing. So I'm I'm way more about that than I used to be. Like, hey, does that sing well? Is that do we need to change that up? Either syllable counts or the rhythm, the bounce, the, the sound of the word. Is there a different word? And sometimes it comes out to you, oh, you like this word or that word? I'm like, whichever one sings better. Like, which which one rolls off your tongue better? Go with that one. Because once we said what we need to say, if they both say the same thing, get the point across, mm-hmm. what sings better? You're the singer. Does yeah, that sound better? Different. Does that sing better? Go with that one. Because I want it to be singable. Uh, the melody has to be great. And the vibe has to be right. I'm not going to kill that for the sake of my lyric, which is so precious to me. Now, this is a complete song. It's lyric and melody. And if anything, I'll I'll sacrifice a little bit of lyric for the sake of a great melody, because that's most of what people are going to hear. Now, I'm confident in my ability Mm -hmm. that we'll be able to say what we need to say in a cool, compelling way, lyrically, because I have faith in my abilities and my co-writer's abilities. So, yeah, I'll scratch something. I'll kill my babies. You know, lyrically... If it's for the sake of a killer melody, because you know what? We can make it work. We can make it work. But that melody, that's really, that's what most people are going to hear. They're not ever really going to know what you're talking about. So I'm not going to sacrifice a great melody for. Yeah, they're happy to sing the melody with the different, their own damn lyrics to it. Oh, yeah, exactly. How many songs do you love? You have no idea what you're talking about or you get lines wrong, whatever. But how many songs do you sing in your head that you don't really like the melody? (laughs) <laughs> but you like the lyric. Yeah, yeah it's not, none. You gotta yeah. give mad respect to the melody writer. Okay. So that's what I had to say today. One of my longer episodes, I guess. But hey, listen, if, yeah. if you want to. killer, though. There's a lot of information there. Well, hopefully, really technical and, and, and digging deep to help folks out. So let us know what you think. We'll post this in the climb community. Let us know your thoughts. If you have other thoughts, like, hey, as a melody writer, this is something I love when the lyricist brings in. Or if you're a lyricist, say, this is what works for me, or I have further questions. Hit us up in the comments when we post this, or just hit us up, just make your own 
post and ask us questions. We'd love that. If you're interested in joining the next co-writer cafe, uh, we have one coming up. We do it every month. Then songwritingpro.com, just there's a link to join the community and find out more. You can you can do that songwritingpro.com slash inside to find out more about the co-writer cafe and the other stuff we have going on. So you can be part of a, a community of other writers. And lastly, I want to give you something for hanging out with us for almost an hour now. I have a free ebook. It's called Think Like a Pro Songwriter. It just gathers some of the lessons I've learned over the past bunch of years in the music business now. And you can get that at songwritingpro.com slash gift. Songwritingpro.com slash gift. Just tell me where to send it. I email it to you. It's a PDF. It's an easy uh, read. It's not like a novel or anything, but try to be packed with information for you. Useful information. And that's it. That's what Awesome. All right, guys. Well, it brings us to the end of another Killer Climb episode. Make sure that you join the Climb community. Make sure that you subscribe to the podcast wherever you like to listen to your podcasts. Leave a rating and review. We're trying to get to 200. Hopefully, it's five stars, but we'll we'll read it even if it's one. We've had those. Yeah, we've had and then finally, one. tell a friend about it. That's the big deal. Tell a friend. Let them know that you're spending this kind of time on this and that there's got to be a reason to do it because maybe we can help them too. So this podcast exists. Why? Because we want you to win. So keep on climbing, and we'll see you at the top.